And your name is? I'm Thor. You're Thor? Well, it hurts. Across the rainbow bridge of Asgard, where the blooming heavens roar, we'll behold in grandest wonder, the God of Thunder, mighty Thor, the God of Thunder. It is 4.48 p.m. on Thursday, November 2nd, 2017, and I am on my way to the AMC Burbank 16 in beautiful Burbank, California, to catch a 7 p.m. screening of Thor Ragnarok. I'm some jerk with a camera, and welcome to One Movie Later, where I compare and contrast my preconceptions and postconceptions of movies in theaters now. So there's a few movies coming out this month that have vague tangential relations to theme parks. Thor Ragnarok obviously has Hulk in it, and he's got his own roller coaster at Universal Orlando. Justice League is coming out this month, and a Justice League ride just opened at Six Flags Magic Mountain, but I have not ridden it yet because who wants to go to Six Flags when you don't have to? And of course, Disney's releasing Coco, which is probably going to take over the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot eventually, and in the meantime, they're releasing a Frozen short with it, and that's already out the Norway Pavilion at Epcot, so they're right next door to each other. None of these felt like strong enough connections that I had to cover them for one movie later, but I did want to do a one movie later this month. So a couple weeks ago, I set up a poll on my Twitter feed asking which of these movies I should cover. And I got to admit, I was kind of hoping Justice League would win just because it looks like such a fascinating train wreck. I mean, I've never covered a DCEU movie on one movie later before, and this kind of would have been my chance since the Justice League ride at Six Flags is not just a roller coaster, but a proper ride with, like, a story and everything. Not to mention, when you consider what a colossal, not just train wreck, but train wreck wreck, it's like six different train wrecks crashing into each other that the DCEU has been up to this point, with the exception of Wonder Woman. And not just the fact that Justice League was following in Batman v Superman's footsteps, but also that Zack Snyder had to step out of the project and was replaced by Joss Whedon, so it's literally just, let's bring in the guy who made superhero team-ups work the first time, and he'll sort out this rigmarole. Plus, the fact that apparently it originally had like a three-hour runtime, and it's being released into theaters as 110 minutes, so they slashed it to the bone in an effort to save it, or at least polish a turd. But instead, the clear winner of the poll was Thor Ragnarok, which by all accounts looks like a thoroughly satisfying and genuinely entertaining movie that'll give me very little to complain about. What am I going to do with you people? I mean, remember back in July when Comic-Con was happening and the trailers for Ragnarok and Justice League premiered, like, within an hour of each other? And the Ragnarok trailer kicked the Justice League trailer's ass. I mean, Justice League is the movie the entire DCEU has purportedly been building up to, and its trailer got its ass handed to it by the second trailer for the third movie of... Maybe, if we're being generous, Marvel's fourth biggest franchise. And that's if you don't count the Avengers and you don't count Spider-Man. Then Thor is like fifth or sixth. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if the Marvel Cinematic Universe has a weak spot, and that's a pretty big if, it has been the Thor movies up to this point. They haven't been bad, exactly. They've just both kind of been underwhelming. And if you know where Marvel was coming from with that first Thor movie, it's kind of understandable that they played it safe. Because the first Thor movie was the first big test of will this interconnected cinematic universe thingy actually work? Yeah, there was that teaser at the end of Iron Man, and yeah, Tony Stark showed up briefly at the end of The Incredible Hulk, but those were basically just little tiny scenes at the end. Had Iron Man bombed, they could have easily cut that scene from Hulk and just been like, what Avengers initiative? We don't know what you're talking about. Iron Man 2 laid a lot more groundwork for the cinematic universe by introducing Black Widow and giving Nick Fury a much bigger part, but it was still Iron Man 2. It was still a sequel to a really successful movie, so it wasn't that far afield for blockbuster filmmaking. Thor was a much bigger risk, because if that had failed, they wouldn't have canceled the Avengers, but they would have been a lot more unsure if the Avengers was going to work. Thor was the first non-sequel Marvel Studios put out that set up a lot of the interconnectivity. It introduced Loki, it gave S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Coulson as big a part as he had in the Iron Man movies. So from a business standpoint, I don't blame them for setting the movie mostly on Earth and making the plot 
basically a retread of the 80s Masters of the Universe movie, but from a pure audience standpoint, it wasn't as fun as just a crazy adventure on Asgard. Not enough Anthony Hopkins and way too much Cat Dennings. And unfortunately, the same can be said about the sequel, Thor The Dark World, because I guess even though Avengers had been a hit, Marvel was still a little worried about if anyone was gonna still care about this after the Avengers. So if you had asked me like a year and a half ago, which Marvel movie are you least looking forward to, I probably would have said Thor Ragnarok, just because the Thor movies have left me kind of cold so far. But then came the trailer. I think it can be safely said that Marvel is no longer afraid to really have fun with their toys. And thank God. Especially in the graphics of the trailers, it almost looks like, what if a canon film had a really huge budget? It's so beautifully 80s and so beautifully cheesy, even more so than the Guardians movies. Marvel has really been stepping up its game visually lately. Like, Civil War had perhaps the best script of any Marvel movie, but visually it was still just kind of bleh. I mean, the big centerpiece battle sequence just took place at a generic airport. But ever since then, like, Doctor Strange had those really great trippy sequences. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 played a lot with visual language. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming shot visual comedy better than just about any Marvel movie. And now we've got Thor Ragnarok, which looks like... My god, it, it, it looks like a painting come to life. And of course, in this movie, Thor is teaming up with Hulk, and we haven't really seen either of them since Age of Ultron. There was even that line in Civil War where the general asks, do you have any idea of Banner and Thor's whereabouts right now? And they don't, but now I guess we're gonna find out where they've been all this time. Loki is also back in this movie, which is always an absolute good. And perhaps best of all, from the marketing so far, absolutely no trace of Kat Dennings, or Natalie Portman, or Stellan Sarsgaard. That whole boring subplot with the girlfriend and her family back on Earth is not really a factor in this movie, apparently. Also, oddly enough, no sign of Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange in the trailer so far, even though there was that mid-credits tag on Doctor Strange, which heavily inferred that he would be a part of this movie. I keep a watch list of individuals and beings from other realms that may be a threat to this world. Your adopted brother Loki is one of those beings. Worthy inclusion. And apart from just Hulk being in the movie, there's a couple other vague theme park connections as well. For one thing, Jeff Goldblum is in this movie, which I always love seeing Jeff Goldblum, and he is apparently playing the brother of Tanalir Tavon. Tanalir Tavon is, of course, the collector, as seen in Guardians of the Galaxy briefly, and very prominently in Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Speaking of Mission Breakout, the Mission Breakout show building can be seen in the background of one of the shots in the first trailer. I have no idea if that'll factor into the story or if that's just a little easter egg they threw in but either way woo reference and of course at some point in this movie they will fight the monster that can be seen in guardians of the galaxy monsters after dark which of course was the halloween nighttime overlay of guardians of the galaxy mission breakout so far, Ragnarok has gotten amazing reviews, even for a Marvel movie, and the few people who are complaining about it are complaining that it's too funny, of all things. Oh no, it might make me laugh. The horrors. I mean, if you know anything about me, this goes without saying, but... I love how ridiculous it looks. I love how they've leaned into the sheer absurdity of all this stuff. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it! Because absurdity is fun, and I don't care how many edgelords say otherwise. They're wrong! And, of course, in the mythos of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we still have yet to discover the last remaining Infinity Stone, the Soul Stone. Will it show up in this movie or in Black Panther? I guess only time will tell. Isn't it interesting that just a few months after this movie about Norse gods, Marvel's releasing a movie about African gods? It's like a cinematic black and white cookie. So I am very much looking forward to seeing Thor Ragnarok, and I hope it doesn't let me down. I mean, it's no Justice League, but then, what is? Okay, 
uh, for their first time ever on One Movie Later, we have a couple of my fellow Channel Awesome contributors. Uh, introduce yourselves and plug yourselves, guys. Hi, I'm The Dom. Uh, I do lots of adaptation. I review adaptations. Sorry, concise. Uh, I'm Kaluna. I do uh, a bunch of different video series. Uh, I do a Let's Play series, and my main review series is called Screenshots. And uh, joining us once again, we have... Hi, I'm Erica Haynes. I'm an actor who occasionally, I guess, appears in, in people's things. <laughs> she was J.K. Rowling in my Harry Potter video, among other things. Uh, and hi, I'm Luke Ski, the number one most frequent user of the hashtag Mighty Magiswords on any social media. <laughs> Indeed you are. And we just saw Thor Ragnarok, and uh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, again, you know, Marvel movies, you don't really have a lot to complain about. I mean, I, I, I guess in this case, if you really wanted to nitpick, it was almost too awesome for its own good. <laughs> in, in the sense that... When it was about a third of the way in, I almost felt exhausted. It was just so much creativity on screen at every point that it it, it just almost felt like okay, I need I need to I need a break. I need like, to. Do you remember Full One where at one point he was just in a coffee shop? Having yeah, a coffee. It's, it's like, it this felt, drink, I like it. Yeah. It felt, like were, it felt like they were trying to make up for the other two. It's like we didn't have enough awesome. Now we got to jam back three movies worth in one. When we saw the original trailers, we see okay, Hella, okay, Planet Hulk. Okay, so we're taking the Ragnarok story and the Planet Hulk story, and we're going to combine them into one movie. Oh boy, <laughs> how are they going to make this work? And they made it work! I'm so glad this can finally exist. Yes. A movie with this much sheer batshit craziness all thrown into the screen at once, <laughs> and just let the audience parse it out. They'll, they'll love it, who cares? In a perfect world, this would have been the first Thor movie. Yeah. Or, or a movie very much like this. I, I, I mean, you or wouldn't at have, least the sequel. I would have set a very high expectation. Well, because with the first one, you always have the origin story, and there's always certain trappings that you have with that. So I'd understand if the first one like was the way it was. This is the one that I wanted as a sequel. And I don't think anybody really knew where the Marvel movies were going to go. And so when I look at the old Thor movies, I don't think they're like that good. But I also don't hold them up to the newer ones, because now we've got a franchise that's like really utilizing the best of the best because nobody knew how to make Thor work. Everybody was like, oh, Marvel, who's your favorite Marvel character? I never heard anyone talk about Thor and the fact that they made it a movie was like a huge thing. Thor looked really cool and he had the hammer. Yeah, you know who would be a good Thor would be uh, if they made a movie? Uh, just put a blonde wig on The Rock. And yeah, The Rock. Throw hammers at people. Yeah, yeah, he'd be great. I'm just an ordinary demigod. Had we not known anything about Thor going into the Avengers, this would have been a great follow-up to make people like super jazzed about the Thor franchise and be able to expand on it because it would just it was so colorful and so pretty so and so very so rock opery. It was just great. So much yeah. 80s, so much eighties. Yes, yeah, so I've had my fill of eighties. Yeah. I can't watch Stranger <laughs> Things for at least a week. <laughs> Can we all agree the most awesome part is the complete lack of Cat Dennings? Oh yes. Aww. <laughs> Dennings in the other films. I thought she was quirky and fun. No, don't she was just, I'm sorry, you entitled to be wrong. The stuff on Earth in the first two movies involving Natalie Portman's wacky scientist family this week on Two Broke Girls was easily the weakest stuff about those two movies, and this film basically acknowledges that by just hand-waving it away, by having a character say to Thor at one point, I'm sorry Jane dumped you, and it's like, that's all we need. That stuff in the first two movies feels even more pointless now, but at least this film admitted it! If Captain America Civil War was like Avengers 2.5, yes. then this is like the other side of the coin. This is the one part of that big battle we didn't get to see right. Thor yeah. versus Hulk. Let's put them on their own planet and give them their own huge fight <laughs> and have it be epic. I forget who said it, but I once heard some quote by someone or other that said, the secret to a good fight scene is that the audience shouldn't know who's going to win. And that was the case with a lot of fights in this movie. I always appreciate when fight scenes and the choreography match the music beats. Like, I appreciate that so much. And they yeah. did it so good. 2017 Marvel Studios films, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, uh, uh, Spider-Man Spider Homecoming, Homecoming, and Thor Ragnarok. Basically, 2017 is the year Marvel Studios brought the funny. And oh my yeah. god, did they deliver as 
a person who has a one-track mind of comedy, this has been a great year for Marvel Studios. The next two Marvel Studios films are Black Panther and Avengers Infinity War. Now, Black Panther looks badass as hell. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I'm kind of guessing they are probably going to make it less jokey joke jokey Not counting what? Catwoman? Can you think of another superhero movie with a black lead? Steel? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Blade? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Blade. Blade, Blade. okay. Yeah. yeah, Blade's like one that people consider quality, but like the newer superhero. Blade era, Man. Wonder Woman was this huge uh, uh, victory for like, yes, there can be a, a female led superhero film and it can be amazing and awesome and profitable and, mm -hmm. and woohoo for positive examples for young kiddos out there. So I'm, I'm kind of assuming Black Panther is that, you know, going to be for the African, <laughs> I want to say African American, but it's for the whole world. For, for right, the, right, right, right. No, for, it's, it's yeah. definitely for people of color everywhere. That has a bit more gravitas to it. I'm assuming the filmmakers know that and they might dial down the jokes. Avengers Infinity War, I'm assuming that's going to be some pretty heavy stuff and that possibly very important beloved lead characters might die. Yes. I mean, I know Joss Whedon isn't involved anymore, but this has somebody's gonna die written all over it. This Definitely. has he's on the wind. This is the year you know. of the like kind of calm. Yeah, so it's storm. like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna give you three big dishes of awesome levity here in 2017. Because in 2018, you're gonna get gut you're gonna get punched. the rug let's pulled see. out from under. Let's see who are all the disposable uh, people in the cinematic universe no. right now. Okay. <laughs> Which the actors? They're gonna bring back Coulson and kill him again. <laughs> if there's a thing that keeps this from attaining the highs of, say, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is that it doesn't quite have the emotional resonance of that film as well. It's kind of just awesome, 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 and a couple of times it stops to kind of have a, a dramatic scene, but there's nothing nearly on the level of, like, you know, the Yondu funeral scene, you for need, example. You need like, to have those pauses in order to really appreciate that it. That is true, yeah. You need those, like, kind of slower, quieter moments, and this one really doesn't take that many times to do that, and even when they do, they're very, very quick. Thor kind of blew its emotional wad, so to speak, in the second movie with the death of Loki. Loki didn't actually die, it was yet to get another Loki fake out. So it's like, we can't do the whole Loki's dead again thing, because it's like, you know, it's like no one's buying it. Odin revealing himself as Loki at the end of at the end of Dark World really seemed like a cop out to me. It seemed like a really cheap way to just end on a button of oh what if blah blah blah. It it just felt like really. But they found a really good way to kind of work around that in that movie and make that narrative work regardless. For I think because they were afraid of the backlash of being yeah. like Loki's dead. Oh no! All the fan girls. What will we do? I felt like they weren't comfortable letting their emotional beats hold weight. They had to undercut it with a joke. Everybody's just like looking at this thing that's happened and it's emotional and you feel the weight of it and then somebody makes a joke and you're like, oh, all right. It's funny, but you're like, there's so many other funny jokes in the film that you don't need one more joke. I can't think of a single unfunny joke in this film. I, every joke worked for me. I mean, I mean, some of them got a bigger laugh than others, but I can't think of any that just completely fell flat. Oh, yeah. I don't no. think that there's any bad jokes in this film whatsoever. If it's, like, between, I don't know, 39 jokes and 40 jokes, as opposed to, like, taking one of those jokes out to have an emotional moment, it doesn't make the other jokes less funny. I definitely was kind of feeling, like, a little bit of joke fatigue. Like, again, yeah. they were all funny, but there were definitely moments that's like, oh, this is a serious moment, and there's a joke. Yeah, it, it's also, um, I've started okay. to expect it now. This the, the last couple of movies have been so silly that every time there's a big billboard, so like, we're doing it for truth, justice, and freedom, and we're gonna win, and I expect there to be a big flop now. Thor loses his hammer mm. in this movie. Sexy badass uh, evil witch lady's just like, nope. Yep, <laughs> you know, like a hell, bitch. Yeah. Thor totally being stripped of the things that he has come to like almost hold as a crutch, you know, his hammer and having to improvise. I've noticed that at the end of someone's trilogy, they lose their iconic item, icon, because like um, Iron Man had his arc reactor removed. Uh, uh, Captain America gave up his adamantium shield, and now Thor's lost his hammer, so they've... they right. yeah, vibranium they've... shield. <laughs> I'm sticking with that. I'm doubling down. The adamantium <laughs> shield. An those are X-Men's. Those are Wolverine's They literally claws. are not allowed to Fox say. Fox has the rights yeah, to they're, adamantium. Oh, they're, they're literally not allowed to say. We're gonna get sued in the comics that it's a. It's adamantium. It's vibrating. We adamantium. know in the comics. We know. Yeah, but they, they they don't call the tesseract the tesseract. No, they had to call it something else because legally Fox had the rights. Exactly. Right to say. Oh. 
Just like all the mutatables running around. You can dub me really badly. We right. picked up his vibranium shield. <laughs> We're a DC Universe family and we call them metahumans, damn it. Captain America gave up his vibranium shield. I think we should take a moment to talk about the really freaking awesome badass lady characters of this movie. Jeff yeah. Jeff Gold. Jeff Gold. <laughs> Just to add to your earlier point about how over the top and bonkers this movie is, yes. Jeff Goldblum is perfect for this movie. He's so oh good. It's exactly what this movie needed. Oh. His name was Chaos Theory, right? What? Is that what you told me? The, the Grandmaster? Grand oh, Grandmaster. No, the Grand. Uh, the Sorry, Tony, I thought you said his name was Chaos Theory. So I whispered Chaos name. Theory to you in the theater as a reference to Jurassic Park. Yeah. Oh. I said, that, that's, that's Chaos Theory. <laughs> <laughs> and you interpreted it as that's the character name. I got confused. Yeah, no. Grandmaster. Well, that's Grandmaster. That's, that's chaos, dude. If they do a DC crossover, this guy could be Grandmaster Flash. Hella struck me as kind of another generic Marvel villain. I thought I'm she was leagues above other ones, though. Really? Like, okay. I thought she, she was, was awesome. Maybe, maybe, good maybe I'm direction. wrong about that. I, I no, no. kind of agree. If we're comparing her to the Thor Dark World villain, right. which we, absolutely I don't even remember his name. Had no personality. I don't remember him Destro at all. Destro from G.I. Joe. I barely, I <laughs> don't even really know what his motivations were. I don't know who he was or what he did. Hela didn't have really much of a personality but beyond, like, this is my ambition, I want this, go. She's definitely a step in the right direction oh, of, you know, figuring out what you're going to do with memorable characters and stuff like that. And I definitely will remember her because she's cool, first of all. Like, yeah. I'll remember she Hela. I'm it. not going to remember the dude from Dark World. I'm not going to remember the dude from the first Guardians. If she yeah. was a dude, you mean would he... she have been massively different from the other two villains? You mean though? Loki? If Hela had been a guy, she would have just basically just been the Dark Elf again because he also had a grudge against Odin. He'd come to destroy Asgard. She's not an amazing villain in terms of, like, you know, like com comparably to other ones, but at least within the Marvel universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, she's like leagues above some of the other ones. She's what Thor could have been if he had gone down a, a way, way bad path. Yeah. If he had been like, fuck you, Odin, I'm a, you know, I'm well, a take off. Because he was like that in the beginning of the first yeah. Thor film because that's why he got banished. She seems like very like noble, like entitled, like prissy bitch kind of. And like, yeah. I don't know, it, just, it was different enough she didn't need to be super complicated. She's incredibly powerful, like, and she looks awesome. She's played by Kate Blanchett. She's also can, played by Kate Who can Blanchett. read the phone book and make it compelling. Mm -hmm. I love her antlers. You know, mm -hmm. Not only does she Loki's look- like, come on! And she rides right? took my awesome. color palette, too, and she rides an awesome wolf dog. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm so happy. Then Black Clifford was-, <laughs> was I will agree that, if nothing else, Hela does look awesome. In fact, I dare say she looks- Hella awesome? Oh. Ah! Uh, I'll be downstairs. Okay. I'm still gonna cosplay her. <laughs> I, I probably I, uh, won't do antler version because that'll be really hard. Oh, come on. No, you, well, what's the point if you don't do the I need antlers. to have a Sunday day where I'm just gonna wear the long black wig with that just straight down with her, like, looking like, with, like, the super dark makeup and just looking like I need a coffee. Uh, As somebody who's, like, a big Norse mythology buff, and I know the comics adjust things because right, in, right, in right. actual Norse mythology Hela is Loki's child. That's what I was like, <laughs> like, I was As reading that. The eight-legged horse that Odin rides on, that is actually also Loki's child when he disguised himself as a lady horse and was in an interaction with a male horse, shall we say? Oh! Norse mythology is weird. Yeah, That's no, interesting. Also, look, Loki is a sexual deviant. He if makes you, really weird babies. If you he makes want, a giant snake, he makes a wolf, he makes the Lady of Death. Norse mythology was basically just Rule 34 fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. you want to make a badass warrior, you get some clay, you get some lightning, boom, badass warrior. <laughs> yeah, some cilantro, a little bit of paprika. You're in, like, green and black. You've got, like, Loki's colors exactly. You look like you could be siblings, and he's the adopted one. She can summon antlers. I'm pretty sure she can dye her hair. Loki's, like, black and green you know, scheme. That's not his natural colors. He's a frost giant. He's naturally blue. That's a fair point. Well, so yes. if he was made to look a certain way, it would make sense that's that Odin true. would choose colorings that he already produced. Maybe. I mean, yeah. I know that's, I'm, I'm just retconning things to make sense of my own brain, I but suppose. that might make sense. There's a thing that they go to in the very beginning uh, that, like, has to do with, like, the beginning of Ragnarok, and it actually technically matches, like, some of the, uh, 
way that Ragnarok begins within Norse mythology. So mm -hmm. I was like, it was kind of cool to see like little hints here and there. I pointed out in the intro that in the trailer you can see the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy mission breakout uh, show building in the background of one of the shots, but it's not in the background in the actual movie. Uh, I was looking for it and they replaced it with a different background, so I guess that's an easter egg just for the trailer. I wish they, in like the post credit scene, they had done something crossing over with Guardians again. I, I just really want to see those two like outer <laughs> space worlds collide. I think well, that'll like... happen in Infinity War. I want to talk about the cold tags in this movie because I've noticed a trend for the Marvel movies, with exceptions, there are exceptions to this, but it seems like there's always a mid credit scene and then the post credit scene, and it's like the mid credit scene has to do with, you know, plot stuff that's actually going to set up future movies, and then the end credits, the, the, the post credit scene is just a joke. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the case with uh, Homecoming, certainly. Mm, that, yeah. was, that was and a really big troll. The original the Avengers, way. it was just them eating schwamm. That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, think I guess that that's was, the template That was it. the beginning of the funny ones. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. then I, I think they, by then, had figured out, like... And then, of course, Guardians of the Galaxy. The first Guardians had probably the biggest one with Howard the Duck. Yeah. Right, yeah. yes. <laughs> I'm so mad at the Howard the Duck. <laughs> I was I was yeah. equal parts angry and full of respect. By the way, um, no soul stone in this movie, so I guess they're saving that for Black Panther. Mm. That, they must be. If they even show it in there at all. The like, soul stone! That one I'm... Uh, That's racist. I could have sworn that the thing from Dark World, the Red Stone, and the Tesseract were both given to the collector. No, the, the 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 red thing was given to the collector, but the tesseract was kept on Asgard. They, oh, they specific okay. they specifically gave it to the collector because they said it's dangerous for two infinity stones to be in the that same place. The six infin infinity stones spell out Thanos. Yes. And the one that hasn't been introduced yet is uh, is H. Starts with H. We've got Tesseract is the T. The what Aether from uh, from Dark World yeah. is is A. The necklace from um, from Doctor Strange is N. The orb from Guardians is O, and the scepter is S. People were speculating that it would either have something to do with Hela or Heimdall. Uh, um, and but it, it might be Heimdall. I think that's the basis of that rumor is, yeah. is just the fact that we still need an H thing. But there's lots of words that begin with H, so it could just as easily be something in Black Panther. So mind, time, space, power. Soul. Kindness. Friendship. <laughs> heart. Magic. Heart! No, it's not heart! There's one last one, I can't remember what it is. Mind, power, soul. Bashful. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up! <laughs> power, power, time, soul. Mind, power, Wind. time, Shut, Shut up. up! Space, soul, reality, time. Reality! Reality. 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 reality! reality! And this has been our infinite conversation on the Infinity Stone. <laughs> I highly recommend this movie. It's a lot of fun. A lot of this movie will make even less sense than it already does if you're not caught up on the Marvel movies. <laughs> So I guess get caught up on the Marvel movies and then see this because it's a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But you're going to see it anyway because yes. it's a Marvel movie. Yes. So there you, you go. You probably have before you watch this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's go into spoiler territory, guys. Okay. <laughs> impact to this movie. They had the chance, they had the material there, they killed yeah. off these three established characters, but there was no emotion to it whatsoever. They were just <laughs> dead, <laughs> dead, <laughs> dead. I'm Zachary Levi! Oh. I don't know if you know this, the turkey legs at Disneyland, I've come to find out, are not actually turkey. What they're, are you they're Wait, emu. the big turkey legs that they're people eat? They're emu legs. No, they're not. Uh, shocker, right? Urge to kill rising. I had a feeling fire dude was showing up again. Yeah, let's uh, talk about Satan. Uh, so, um, let's so. Do you have time to talk about okay. Satan? Norse mythology is odd because there are, they know exactly how they're all going to die. There are a certain series of events that pre, that are like the beginning of Ragnarok, and one of them is this fire giant coming into the world and like fucking shit up basically right. is one of them. One of the other ones is Loki. The very first shot of the movie is Thor in a cage and, and it's one of those, right. it reminded me of like the Matt Fraction Hawkeye comics of, so, okay, 
Hold on, let me explain how I got in this situation. You're probably yeah, wondering how I got in yeah, yes, exactly. they, they, they make it feel like a framing device, but it's not. It actually is the beginning of the movie. Yes, so. yes I thought I was so sure that was a flash forward. Right. Was, he's swinging from a chain yeah. and kind of slowly going in a circle. <laughs> like, sorry, I'm not doing this Although on purpose. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's hold on, coming back around. What? Hold on, around. sorry, yeah. wait, I'm not even doing this. One of the best shots in the movie, I just love this, was when he's defeating all of like Satan's minions. That, I'm, I'm just going to call him Satan. Yeah. I don't care what his I name is. I think it's Surter. Uh, I don't care. I'm calling him Satan because he looked like Satan. He does look like so, Satan. So you know, he, he, he's throwing his hammer around, and the hammer's kind of going in a circle, and the camera is locked on the hammer. It's so really it's cool. like the camera follows the hammer in the circle as it's just destroying all these moves. I, I was guessing Arrow oh, was so actually like Guardians of the Galaxy at that point. The Satan thing's monster at the very beginning, his, his little his pet, dragon, you know, yeah. demon dragon thing, also shows up in Guardians of the Galaxy Monsters After Dark, which is the nighttime Halloween overlay of Mission Breakout. Now, my question is, because in the ride, he shows up in the collector's collection, and he's one of the monsters that escapes, so... But he, but he gets killed in this movie, so was he in the collector's collection first, and then... It might be more than one. I think yeah. it might be more than oh, one. Oh, yeah, that's true. You probably had to breed them at some point. Yeah, I, I suppose so. Okay. <laughs> Objection withdrawn! There was an arc in a comic of Thor where Thor did get turned into a frog and was stuck as a frog for a yeah. while. Yes. And they referenced that during that that opening play scene where they're, you know, reenacting oh Loki's God. death. The fake actor Loki is Matt Damon yeah. of all fucking people. Yeah, because naturally, Matt naturally Damon. While, while Thor is off of Asgard and Loki's still pretending to be Odin, mm -hmm. he's built a giant statue to Loki, he's refitted all the armor so they have, like, little horns, mm -hmm. and he has them putting on a play in which... Uh, the ending scene, I guess, is the scene at the end of Thor The Dark World, but it's much more Loki what Loki centric. would want to hear. Exactly. And, by the way, I, I realized as the credits were rolling, Matt Damon played Loki in Dogma. Oh! <laughs> so I, wonder, I wonder if that was a reference to that. Well, I mean, God. He's, he's not, okay, he's That's not... He's not, playing, he's not playing actual Loki, he's playing an I know, but he still Loki. played a character named Loki. Okay. He represents the Western religions. Now in the poem, what do they do? What do they do? Matt Damon, who played Loki, is pl in a movie as an actor playing Loki. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what a world we live in! I thought the guy who played <laughs> Thor might have been his stunt double, but I don't know if it was me, the same it, I was thinking maybe it was his brother Liam. <laughs> Chris, no. Chris no. It, it no. wasn't Liam, no. but... No, but it looks oh, like... Wait, it could have been the third Hemsworth brother. There's, There's a, a third? third? Oh, yeah. 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 Shut <laughs> Hemsworth. I was hoping that one of the like post credit joke scenes would have been them revealing that the Matt Damon actor playing Loki was the real Matt Damon. <laughs> if Asgard Matt Damon didn't die during that whole Hela uprising and is on the ship, then then you know Asgard Matt Damon is in space with them and can come to Earth and and meet real Matt. I Damon. hope he's still dressed up sure. as Loki. Oh, Matt Damon is an extraterrestrial. Yeah, he's yeah. Crash landed on our yeah. planet. I just need these cubes to breathe your atmosphere and also <laughs> one diva moves since I'm a star. Could you put him in some blue liquid? Yeah. I've been falling for thirty minutes. Yeah, let's talk about the Doctor Strange. Scene. Yeah, I don't know if I I could have sworn someone said, oh, it's not just going to be a cameo, he's actually going to be in the film, he's going to do stuff. I that was like the epitome of a cameo. Yeah, it's basically just that one sequence, but it's an awesome sequence. Oh, no, Possibly the best one in the movie. It is, but I feel like I was lied to, because I, could, I yeah. could have sworn they were specifically saying, oh, no. it's not just a cameo. Part of that scene was the mid credit scene in Doctor Strange. Yeah. I was kind of expecting it to be kind of the Thor, Hulk, and Doctor Strange movie, but then I noticed that Doctor Strange wasn't anywhere in the posters or the trailers or anything. I figured it was so I cameo. so that made me okay. It's probably just a cameo, and mm -hmm. it was. I figured because they already have two movies to kind of squish yeah. together. Basically, <laughs> I figured his cameo was enough. I feel like if Doctor Strange had been along for these exploits, it would have been too easy for them to get out he of scenarios because he could have just, just done this and yeah. open up portals True. and you know. Yeah, well, yeah, if he was actually present, they would have gotten there. It's kind of like how nowadays in movies you always have to have the characters lose their cell phones or yeah. or, or or you know have it have their cell phones run out of battery because there are so many classic movies where you know that would be over in 15 minutes mm -hmm. if, if the characters just Let's like die hard midnight run you know just 
wouldn't have worked. I mean, Thor is that character. That he, he is that as a character. That's why they keep cutting out all the other. Mo like he couldn't be in a Civil War because he was right. like, okay, I pick you, bonk. I am Hela. I am the rightful heir to the throne. I was banished. My father swept my identity under the rug, and they're like, Who the fuck are you? Whoever yeah. you are. And she's like, are you I just you? had a dramatic scene. Right. I literally if they just were Oh, Talking dude. about jokes, they would have panned over and Star Lord would have been there. The same thing happens to me everywhere I go. I love yeah. that she did seem genuinely hurt. She was like, I thought you'd be pleased to see me. When Hela first enters the vault and she like tosses down the infinity gauntlet, like, this is fake. Yeah. You know, which which is a nice um, fake. Which, which answers fake news. which answers a bit of uh, a fan question for a while because of course in the first Thor there was that glimpse of the Infinity Gauntlet, mm -hmm. but then in Age of Ultron in the mid credit scene where Thanos puts on the Infinity Gauntlet, it's the wrong hand. It's yeah. like one of them is left handed, the other is right handed. So the fans are asking, well, which one is the real? Is one of them a fake? And and this answers that. They basically tied up a plot hole with one word, and I love exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so Valkyrie was like really flawed, and she had a drinking problem, and like just her first like badass moment of coming on screen is totally undercut by the fact that she just like passes out and stumbles <laughs> off of her ship. Exactly. Was so great because I feel like. That's another step forward for female characters in cinema. We've had a lot of really great flawless female characters, but now we're going back to creating awesome female characters who are human too. Yeah. And that made me really love Valkyrie because she was conflicted about going back to Asgard because she has all these bad memories and... You know, she drinks to keep it away. Back when Disney was making Princess and the Frog, I knew someone who knew one of the story artists on that film, and the story artist apparently was so frustrated that they couldn't give Tiana flaws. Like, Tiana had to be this basically perfect human being in every way because she was the first black Disney princess wow. and they had to live up to a certain standard. It's like, no, you can't make her too mean or too angry or, or too happy or too any, or too this or too that. It's like, oh, give me something to work with. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we are finally getting female characters who are actually characters and not just these kind of perfect bastions. When he was strapped in that chair and <laughs> was going to meet them. Oh, yes. oh my goodness. Well, we I immediately was like, are, are we about to go on Space Mountain? It looks it like, feels like Space Mountain. Uh, it, it felt more like Spaceship Earth what to me. It's the actual that. music they played in what, Charlie no, and no, the Chocolate yeah, Factory. It, yeah, they played yeah. Pure Imagination. Like, like, and there's shots where I half expected Thor to start saying, There's no earthly way of knowing. Yeah, we saw it on the screen. <laughs> I believe at that moment when we realized it was like a ride, I think all of us immediately turned because Tony yeah. was on like the left of us. Well, and we have kind of were looking at him like, yep. We <laughs> haven't gotten to what's the attraction yet. Did I go mad or did Jeff Goldman refer to Asgard as Asperger's? Uh, <laughs> no, he's Asperger. Asper okay, Asper right. Not I was Asperger. just like, whoa, did he just go there? What are you doing with the Melty Stick? All he did was interrupt. Yeah. That's not a catalog. <laughs> That's not a catalog. What's wrong with you? I just really love that he called it his Melty Stick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> melty. I was like, don't hand me he the Melty would. Stick. He would. He would call it the Melty Stick. I Lord, love that I Thor tried the Black Widow. <laughs> the sun's going down. Yeah. Thor believed that he was really going to calm down Hulk. Like, he just had this, like, really like pure sunshiny smile he's like there you go big guy and then he just gets then smashed and it's just great i like how thor always needs a hammer even like a makeshift like hammer, one just yeah. like right i like that they really felt the impact of that fight because you felt yeah, like that yeah, hammer yeah. weighed a yeah. ton like yeah. bonk that was good. Yeah, I, I could, I could watch, I could watch Hiddleston's reactions to that fight like all day, glaring daggers into Thor when he's like, "It's a friend from work. Hey, Loki." Loki. <laughs> 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 wasn't there for the puny god scene. No. So he no, doesn't he has, even know that he happened. He has no idea. We're supposed to be friends. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the whole kind of WWE meets a sci-fi convention. Mm. All the fans in the crowd <laughs> with their masks and their signs. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that there are tons of men and women out there creating fan art of, you know, yep. naked Hulk. <laughs> So now they, they all get uh, a, a completely 100% canon view of the Hulk's naked butt. Yep. So uh. we got you're, that. You're welcome. No, yeah, I'm you're welcome, the world. Dude. They became the odd couple. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why did they put them in the same room? You don't like Hulk? You only like 
no, 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 you know, when he finally turns back into Bruce Banner, he's kind of crazy. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> like, he's like he's been in a dark room for yeah, a long time. Yeah, it's, it's like he's been in solitary confinement or something, and you see him losing his mind, and at various points, like little bits of his skin turn green, and that was a really nice effect. Yeah, oh, yeah, I liked how um, when they were in the crowd and he got like angry for a second, he yeah. had that big green bulging yeah. vein. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's great. Or then the crowds just because they're having like the Hulk parade, like, <laughs> right. all the green green stuff's going off in his face, he's just like... I, I like that they sort of th explained why he was talking now, because they said it, all the previous times, uh, it, the Hulk was the car when he was in the driving seat, but this time Bruce was in the trunk. So he's saying, now that Hulk is fully his own thing, that's why he's talking. I haven't seen Age of Ultron in a while. What happened to Hulk at the end of well, Age he of Ultron? He, he saves Natasha, and they get like the people off, and he takes one of the jet planes. The and it's it, the Quinjet that it was, has the stealth mode. It had Ultron. He so drives he it on. as Hulk, and he just bounces. Yeah, he, he doesn't he like. Throws Ultron off. He just it. leaves. That's how, that's how he stops Ultron. And okay, that, that message right. from Natasha that we see in there is what she's trying to say to him, and then he just kind of as Hulk like beep, mm. turns it off, yeah, and he, the ship just psh, flies off. Right. And then that's somehow right. one Hulk. The last thing you see is him just sitting down. Like they were they were tracking it. Always did it. They were tracking it on radar, and then they lost radar contact. So right. He, so we're guessing. So, so we assume he just flew off into space and landed on the junk planet, whatever. Or got sucked into the junkie on. Tony Stark's leftover clothes, <laughs> that T-shirt with the '80s Art Deco woman on it. I, that cracked me up. I'm like, of course, that's the T-shirt Tony Stark has stashed in a Quinjet. Mark Ruffalo's like, he just wears these really tight pants, and I was like, is he making a short joke? Like, <laughs> this is just because we're for daddy. Oh, okay. I thought that was like a being less endowed. Joke. No, that's also oh, what I mean. Right. He's having that like space talk conversation mm. with with Banner as they're trying to figure out where how the ships work. And I was like, oh right, it's not that Thor's an idiot. He's just not from our planet. Yeah, of course right. he would know like interstellar travel stuff. It was almost a science bro moment, but not quite a science bro. <laughs> like getting there. Favorite joke in it. Uh, it was just when uh, Loki's tied up and he's like, oh yes, he's tried to kill me many times. The first, the first time was when I was a kid. He pretended to be a snake. He knew that I love snakes, so I went up the big snake. So he was like, ha oh, ha, it's me. Then he stabbed me. <laughs> So awkward. It's like, yes, no, I women great. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you guys have a good part because you can do it just as well as men. I'm, I'm, I'll just be over here. She doesn't recognize Banner because she didn't see him transform. She's like, I think I know you. And she's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you know. Was that one scene where they both jump back into the spaceship and they end up facing each other and grin? Was that the romance scene, or was I reading into that? I think that they were probably trying to test the waters on that one a bit. Yeah. I think they're gonna be like, okay, what's the audience reaction to this? And but, I'm, I'm glad they didn't go in that direction, because yes. that would have felt a little forced and cliched. The uh, big reveal, where it turns out that Odin's not as nice as everyone thought. It's like, oh, is that, turns out he was actually a conqueror, and he was a viking, and I was like, were we supposed to believe he wasn't? No, nothing yeah. about this, from him being the god of, of the Norse, or him being Anthony Hopkins made me think, nice guy. <laughs> I was always assuming he was a bit of a dick. I kind of saw that as Hela's whataboutism. Well, your your dad was a conqueror too, you know? <laughs> but Odin's emails. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you become the ruler of a world, it is easy enough for you to kind of rewrite history. A little yeah, bit. pretty so much. Why should he bother? Because he wants uh, to be remembered as he, a nice dude. He was like, okay, so I kicked the elves' ass, and I kicked the uh, the frost giants' ass, but the rest, everyone else, I was really nice to. I was I, drunk. I, it was I was in college. Actually, it was the seventies. Everyone was committing genocide. I was actually, it was literally the seventies, seven zero. Yeah, I, the year. I was actually <laughs> expecting it to be the, like Hella was his daughter from another marriage, and I thought they were actually <laughs> going to reference. Uh, no, I honestly thought they were going to reference Frigga because she had such a big role in the previous film and her connection to Loki and her being like a mother and very benevolent and sweet. I thought it was going to be when he met her, that's why he changed, but they didn't go into that. What else have we not talked about? Carl Urban. Oh yeah, Carl Urban. <laughs> He's there. Movie. I like yeah. Carl. He was Scourge. I liked him a lot, but I think 
If you had to cut well, he, something, I was worried no, 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 he, he was going to come out of the spittle from the Hobbit. You needed someone for Hella to talk. Basically, to. yeah. He needed someone for Hella to have conversations with and dole out dole out her exposition to, and also someone who could betray her. I love me some Carl Urban, believe me, but. <laughs> I was just kind of like, okay. I saw his redemption coming because I saw that he had yeah. the M16s right. and he hadn't used them yet. And there's yeah. lots of children Check crying, M16. so you know somebody has to be saved. Is Bruce Banner dead? Because I know he said he, he can't turn back into Bruce once he becomes a Well, he said yet. he didn't think he could turn but, back but, into but Bruce. But he was also, he jumped on, that, that little faraway joke they had where he jumped onto the Rainbow Bridge. Like, he's probably, he's like, <laughs> oh yeah. Like his eyes have rolled up and everything, he's not breathing. He once tried to kill himself by putting a gun in his mouth and pulling the trigger. Right. And that woke up the other guy and he was still alive. So the other guy turning into out. Thor, or turning into Hulk. So maybe Bruce did that on purpose because he, know, he knew that almost killing himself was the only but, way to bring Hulk back. Much, that yeah. was the joke too far for me. Because that was, uh, I didn't laugh at that, and it was really funny. But I just, just like, could we, you know, every time there's a yeah. big build up, they spoil it with a joke, and this yeah, was an otherwise I, really dramatic scene. Yeah, I, I, I kind of saw that joke coming as well, and I thought the execution alone was good enough to save it. But I was almost c kind of like, I'm tired of them subverting these things. Just don't subvert this, and they did. The execution saved it for me, but yeah, by that point it was getting tired. It's also yeah. the same joke that Edward Norton did. Oh, yeah. He jumped off the back of the vertebra and, was like, and he falls, oh shit, and he hits the ground and like, oh shit, he actually died, but then he becomes a Hulk. Did anyone else notice that in the trailers when Thor does what you the god of and he comes down and he's doing the electric eye thing, he had two eyes in the trailer. Hmm. When he, he lands on well, the reindeer bridge. Well, they didn't want to spoil that, obviously. Right, like, right, yes. yeah. yeah. That, 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 that's the show. kind of thing you have to do now because everyone can go through it frame by frame. I yeah. thought it was really cool that he like stylistically got the same eye cut as, as Odin because she said she led up to it and she was like... She made that whole blind comment and then blinded him. I wonder if she was doing that on purpose because then she goes, yeah, now you remind me of dad. Because Odin has to die in order for her to get back into the world, my guess is maybe it's kind of like her way of killing Odin without actually killing Odin. I love the visual of whenever Thor really needed help, when he was in a moment of extreme stress, it just cut to a shot of of Odin standing on the fjord there in, mm -hmm. in Norway and, and just the, the push in, in on him. But he's in like Midgardian clothes. Yeah. Yeah. I, felt, I, felt, yeah, I felt like Anthony Hopkins was like, okay, you get me for one day and yeah. I'm not dressing up. At oh, first no, it, he like, dressed uh, up during the, during the play scene when he was Loki. No, because he was oh, yeah, in the yeah, yeah. Two days. I know it's supposed to be a serious moment when that's happening, but at the same time it's like, da -dong. Thor, to Odin, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, it looks ridiculous. No, it, it, it's supposed to look ridiculous, and that's what makes it awesome. It's also quite it clearly a CGI field. That was really that's bothering true. me. Yeah, that's true. Did you not have a field? Because when they found not on a fjord, in, they in, in Norway, I, I think I whispered it to Tony, I was like, it's Luke Skywalker. Thor looks dead. He's not dead, he's pining for the fjord. <laughs> well, Odin does this kind of Obi-Wan thing, he's Odin one, I guess, <laughs> where he kind of he gives the cryptic information without really explaining it, and they figure it out later. It's like, oh, he wanted us to do this the whole time. And it's like, you know, it's movie logic as opposed to real logic, where, you know, it, real logic would dictate, just tell them what they're supposed to fucking do. Don't be so goddamn cryptic. Well, he has got, like, immortal senility at this point. That is true. They took the crown that if you put it in the fire, it ends the world, <laughs> and they put it next to the fire. <laughs> It's like, let's put the uranium next to the reactor. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! Oh, fuck! The crown went in the fire, now we're all dead. Well, oh, well. There's only so many people who can get into the vault anyway. Yes, only the frost giants, Loki... He <laughs> let them in! He's part of yeah, the Anyone family. who has a key... They yeah, the royal family! They, they don't What's even it? have the destroyer watching it anymore. Hela draws her power from Asgard, and being in Asgard makes her more powerful. Right. But being an Asgardian, she's automatically a little bit immortal and super powered and all that stuff. And so I kept hoping that like the end of the film would be them somehow luring her from Asgard and getting her stuck in the arena. After Thor and Loki realize, no, we can't prevent Ragnarok, so we have to actually cause it, because that's the only way we can defeat Hela, Loki enters the vault and he sees the Tesseract. Right. They play it as kind of his Terrence Howard next time baby moment, and we don't know whether or not he took oh, it. Oh, he took it. He, he took, took it. it. 
He took it, and that's why in the mid-credits sh- scene, what I'm pretty sure is Thanos' ship shows up. Oh, right. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, he's tracking I, the Infinity Stones. That's my, that's my yeah. guess. They actually showed some uh, Infinity War footage at, I think, D23, which got leaked to YouTube for like five seconds, and but, but I managed to see it, and apparently... I mean, do you guys mind mild Infinity War spoilers? Mm-hmm. Apparently, uh, there's an early scene in Infinity War where the Milano is traveling through space, and, you know, the Guardians are in it, and Thor crashes into their windshield because he's just been <laughs> he's just been careening around in space, and of course Rocket is like, ah, kill it, kill it! <laughs> Wipers! <laughs> and that's and that's how the Guardians get involved with the Avengers, God. is through oh, Thor. Okay. Um, and since we know that Thor is at least had some communication with Doctor Strange, it will, like, right. there's a lot of, there's a lot of, once one or yeah, two sets, effect, it'll just yeah. domino effect and get everybody involved. I'm going to my room. <laughs> Come back. We still got to do what's okay. the attraction. You <laughs> just use that excuse to get a soda. Yes, pig. Oh, you figured out my evil plan. It is time once again for what's the attraction? <laughs> Am I doing it? <laughs> sure, why not? There, there's no it to do. <laughs> so there's the tangential relationships to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, and of course, there's the Incredible Hulk roller coaster that already exists at Universal's Islands of Adventure in Florida. And of course, Disney's building more Marvel stuff in DCA. Qbert is acting all confused. He's very skittery. So the question is, how are they either going to update the current Marvel stuff that exists at theme parks, or uh, add new stuff to Marvel Land eventually at DCA in order to adapt this movie. Dom! No, oh, um, gonna put the, the ride from the, the thing in the planet. Okay. The, <laughs> the ride in the thing with the planet. Yeah, man, I guess Goldblum's gonna be there. Yeah, they're gonna be like, hey, it's my birthday. And they're gonna be like, ah! Your arm's gonna be strapped down. You're like, well, this is getting too real for me. Heather! Um... I'm try- is Mission Earth the one inside Epcot? Spaceship Earth Spaceship is, is Earth? the one inside the giant golf ball. Okay. I think they need to replace that with the scene from the movie and just put all the weird Technicolor and like the, the unusual music. If I remember, there's like an area where like uh, little kids can dress up as like princesses. Like there's like an area like where... They like, got the bibbidi bobbidi boop tea. Can we do that but for adults so we can dress up as Hella? Can we just do that? Or we Valkyrie. Want some leathers. We can get you some leathers. Yeah. I, I want to be pretty. I need a cake. She wants to command the forces of the dead as well as be pretty. Yes! Well, everyone, everyone does! I want to ride the giant, giant, giant wolf. undead wolf! Erica! Well, she took what I was going to say. So, <laughs> uh, 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 Disney reopens uh, Pleasure Island, which is like their like little side thing. And then they do Jeff Goldblum's orgy spaceship. Do, 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 do. Well, you know, there's there's places like this all across the country, but the main one that comes to mind is there's a big long one in Las Vegas uh, where you can zip line down uh, Fremont Street. I want the Imagineers to invent a way to have zip lines be a continuous thing that can like have sudden banking turns, put them all up over. Uh, uh, the Disneyland part of the park and the California Adventure side of the park, and it's you know Mjolnir's wild ride. You're like, ah! You're just holding on to Mjolnir. Zip lining like, you ride the hammer? No. And like, it kind of, it kind of. And like the the docking thing leaves as a giant uh, Chris Hemsworth hand that's like letting you go, like whoa! And then like when you come back in. The hand catching you again, like, whoa! It sounds like you and the hammer had a, quite an intimate relationship. Well, as usual, you're all wrong! What? What? They How are gonna you? do, they are gonna do the pure imagination ride, which they will import from Alton Towers, of course. But, what they're gonna do, they're gonna have Jeff Goldblum on the ride, but he's gonna say, uh, now, at some point, you will have Norse gods on your Norse god ride. But it won't be animatronic, it'll be actual Jeff Goldblum. Yes, <laughs> he'll just, they'll just hire him to stand there. Chris Hemsworth has to be on every single Then one. he gets out, runs along to get in front of the cart again, <laughs> takes off his shirt, and then does the drive. <laughs> I really hate glistens. that man. And then they actually will break down Pirates of the Caribbean to see if the pirates eat the tourists. <laughs> Spoiler alert, they do! <laughs> we spared no expense. Yeah, no expense. <laughs> so until next time, ladies and gentlemen, Dance your cares away. 
Worries for another day. Burn down Asgard. Down in Ragnarok. Down in Ragnarok. Down in Ragnarok. It would explain all the emus I've seen in wheelchairs at Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> They're still having a great time. <laughs> like, hey, they get to the front of the lines, though. That's uh, nice. For God's sake. <laughs> the danger must be growing for the rowers. Keep on rowing. I'm sorry, we need to turn off the AC because uh -oh. the audio is going to. I can do an audio pass on the rest AC of it. AC brought to you by Frost Giants. Yes, Frost Giants. They're cold and so is your soul. My initials are SJWAC, so this show has been brought to you by Social Justice Warrior Air Conditioning. Yes, <laughs> Social Justice Warrior Air Conditioning, where we provide no chill whatsoever. <laughs> Thor Ragnarok! Rock! I can't run under the ice and snow with something in the front of me! Once again, this whole broadcast has been brought to you by Sam. It's everywhere. Get used to it.